Hey, what's up, guys? We are live at 5 at Broadway.com. It is Monday, April 23rd. My name is Paul Wontorek. And my name is Ryan Lee Gilbert. And his name is Mr. Mr. Matt Mr. Roden. <laughs> <laughs> and her name... Is Frances Ruffell. Yes, yes, she's here today. We love her. <laughs> Tony Winner, so you excited. know. You love her. Uh, we're going to talk to her about her... her um, it's, she has like a residency. She's like yeah, a, a, like a Billy Joel style yeah. residency. <laughs> uh, but first, today's top five. All right, we found out today that uh, AL Dubs and Cheetah. <laughs> They're getting a special Tony Award. Stop. <laughs> AL Dub is not a thing. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Now. To, to tell it appropriately. Sir. Andrew, Lord. Sir Andrew Lloyd Sir Weber. Sir Andrew Lloyd Weber. And Cheetah Rivera are receiving, their, they will both receiving the 2018 Tony Awards for Lifetime Achievement in the theater, which is super exciting. Um, obviously, a lot of Tony Awards stuff happening soon. Next Tuesday, a week from tomorrow. Oh my God, it's we, only a week know, left, a week Ryan. Left from tomorrow, we get the nominations. Of course, they are going to be hosted by Sarah Bareilles and Josh Groban on CBS on June 10th. Um, that's when Andrew Lloyd Webber and Cheetah Rivera will receive their Lifetime Achievement. Nominations announcing, uh, being announced by Leslie Odom Jr. and Kat McPhee of Waitress. And that's happening a week Smash from friends. tomorrow. Are you excited? It's all I'm happening. nervous. I'm excited. Well, this is weird because all the nominations come out this week. Normally Everything's it's more happening spread so out. fast. So yeah. tomorrow's the Outer Critics. Yep. Thursday's the Drama Desk. Mm -hmm. Friday's the Cheetahs. The Cheetah Rivera the Award. Cheetahs. The Cheetahs. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, and then so Tony's. it's all happening really condensed this so year. Fast. So I'm very nervous. Um, we got casting today for Shakespeare in the Park. More casting for Shakespeare in the Park. Chuck Woody Awuji. Yes. I hope do I'm it. saying that name yeah, right. I'm that's what, I, did, I, that's yeah. how it looks like. Fingers it, uh, crossed. He, <laughs> of the Low right. Road in the title role of Othello. So. Um, and Corey Stahl. Oh, Corey Stahl. I love Corey Swoon. Stahl. Swoon. Swoon. Corey right. Stahl uh, as Iago. And Heather Lind of Incognito as Desdemona. Ruben Santiago Hudson will direct so the production, which will run from May 29th, my birthday, through June oh. 24th. That's right. A May, a May Corey birthday. Corey Stahl's going <laughs> to give me a Celebrate birthday present. Celebrate your birthday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the 12th Night Musical uh, has been has added current transfers. Wait, the 12th Night Musical? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Remember, musical remember this was... Remember yeah. they right. did this public as a public work. Right, Shana Tom. Yes, right. right. Okay. Oscar Eustace is directing it. Okay. So they've added um Ado Blankson Wood as Orsino. Um and this is of course conceived by I mean maybe not of course, maybe you didn't know. Uh Kwame Kwayarma. Hope I said the name right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the cool things happening in the park. And it's I can't finally wait. feeling like the I was right gonna say, oh my today God. is like the first oh. day that makes it feel like it's all possible. I was able to walk to work. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so nice. Uh, the Cake, the Cake, of a new cake. play, is getting a premiere in New York City, Ryan. Yes. So Becca Brunstetter, she is a TV writer. She works on American Gods on Stars, and she works on This Is, is Us. Is that still on? Um, I do. I, I believe it's still was on, still on Stars. Yes, was. but no more Brian Fuller. He's no longer involved oh, on Stars. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, so, um, so she wrote this the cake. Uh, cake. this cake. play called cake. The Cake. Um, she is an Emmy nominee, by the way. So this is happening with MTC. Um, they're they're off Broadway theater, New York City Center Stage One. Going to be directed by Lynn Meadow. Um, it'll begin February 12th. So. A while from now, February twelfth, and we'll open on March fifth. And this is What's the story. It about, Ryan? So this is about a woman who has a North Carolina bakery. It's super popular. She's recently cast on like the baking competition show of her dreams. When the daughter of her late best friend comes to her, asks her to bake a cake for her and her female fiance's wedding. It's about baking and, cakes for gay weddings. And yeah, how that's what it's about. Yes, yeah, inspired by the case that happened in twenty fifteen, which is currently under consideration at the U.S. Supreme Court. We'll know the ruling probably sometime this summer. So it's quite timely. Just, so very you know, timely. But, but I hear yeah. the new thing at gay weddings is just pies. Just get pies. That's that's, that's what I've heard. <laughs> also, <laughs> they did this Drop play. Drop that one. Look at him flush. They did this play Look at how flush at he Gays are going with pies. They don't want that's to deal with the cakes. Right. Um, <laughs> also, they did this play at, especially ones that like Waitress the Musical. They did this at La Jolla. <laughs> And Faith Prince was in it. Yes, so that's I don't right. know. I don't that's know who right. be in it for yeah. New York, but we no, love no Faith casting, Prince. No casting. Yeah, so I, I can't wait. I'm very invested in this one. What was that play? A catered affair musical. A catered affair. <laughs> that's right. Right. Yes. Slash. It should have been you. It's like a whole. That's awesome. not really her biggest credit. <laughs> genre. <laughs> but she was in that. It's a whole genre. Uh, Lynn won another award today. Lynn Memo Miranda won another award. 
Of course he did. Oh, yes, of course he yeah. did. <laughs> because a week's gone by and he hasn't won an award. Uh, very dessert. Hamilton Mastermind. That's what my notes say. I love mm -hmm. the word mastermind. Exactly. Uh, it's from Lin Manuel Miranda <laughs> has won Actors Equities 2018 Rosetta Lenore Award. Uh, and this is given by Equities National. Equal Employment Opportunity Committee, and it honors an individual theater or producing organization. Obviously, they went with an individual this year, uh, with an exemplary record in the hiring and promotion of people of color, women, and actors with disabilities through diverse and inclusive casting. Very that's cool award. It's a very cool award. Yeah, yeah. and that's a that's a really that's a really long winded way of saying that Lin Manuel Miranda is great. Yeah, and we love yeah. him. And he uh, so yeah, he got the award today, and I think we have photos. Yep, we do on the site yep. of that. So congratulations, Lynn. Congrats. Uh, we got a lot of other stuff on the site, too, uh, from last night, Paul. We were, uh, Ryan, Ryan, you were there on fr Thursday and Friday. I was. Harry Potter opened Harry last Potter night on Broadway. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is open did you, did you on Broadway. That? I I mean, love doesn't even capture how I felt about it. Um, I was blown away by it. It's incredible. Uh, J.K. Rowling, just let me out to you she and John Tiffany night. and Jack Thorne. Oh, I know. I was like live. I was watching Matt on the red carpet live. <laughs> I was very involved in all that. But so yes, there's a new red carpet challenge where if it's not up yet, it's it will about be. to go up yes, in moments. There's a lot of spitting in it. Um, lots of spitting. Yes. Well, they had they spitting had spitting out. They had and swallowing. Yeah. They. Okay. <laughs> there's also opening night red carpet party photos, and then uh, Caitlin McNaney took gorgeous oh, portraits so of everyone involved. They're all just so beautiful and handsome and magical magical and talented <laughs> and it's open go see it at the lyric theater it's incredible you won't regret it <laughs> what, a, what a plug what a plug <laughs> thank you, thank you so much thank for, you for giving us the news of course and now My we're pleasure. gonna get francis rafael so uh you need to take off i'm, I'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave mr matt roden <laughs> yeah. will you please tell us about today's guest francis starred as dina in the original west end production of starlight express she then played the role of Eponine in the first English language productions of Les Miserables in the West End and on Broadway, winning the 1987 Tony Award for Best Featured Actress in a Musical. She's also appeared on stage in Children of Eden, Chicago, Piaf, The A to Z of Mr. P, and The Wild Party, as well as movies and television. And she now has a monthly residency at the Green Room 42. And that's what she's here to talk about today. If you have questions for Francis, and I know that you do, Leave them in the comments section below. We'll get to as many as we can. And now, here is Paul and Francis. Hi. Hello, Paul. Always love seeing you. I love seeing you, too. How are you doing? I'm good. It looks a little bit more theatrical in here. Since oh, yeah. We, we ramped it up for you. It's a bit like Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Oh, is it? You know, like all the curtains that come is in it, and out. Is it? Is it? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, it's very theatrical. Do you feel like you're on stage? I do. Uh, well, you are on live. You are on live television right now. How's it going? I love being in New York. I know, I, you're like a New Yorker now. I'm completely, it's yeah. It's like, it's happened. Bye, London. You're back. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> and by the way, it's Dinah, not Dina. Dina. Because Dinah is a dining car. Oh, Dina the dining car. Dining car. Dina the dining car. Dina the dining car. It's because I'm saying a dining okay, car, do you In his lifetime, he hasn't seen Dollar Express. Yeah. Oh, and no, Dina, I feel so sorry. And Dina, so he doesn't know. Dina is a character in the hey, band. Hey, Dina, visit. what's wrong? Come right? on, girl. Is there a Dinah? Why are you crying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Dinah. Yeah. What's the song Dinah sings? I've been you and C O U P L E D. Yep. Yep. That's a good Aren't one. Aren't they working on a revival? <laughs> Have you got a keyboard? I would. How would you do a revival star at Express? Would you just do it the same? They or are like some in reinvention of oh it. Oh my god! I dreamt about that only last <laughs> night. Of you but did. I have these nightmares that they they're gonna call me up and say, "We need a diner now. We, we've run out. <laughs> Come now!" And then I have to like skate around all these big bowls and things. I, honestly, I literally wake up panicking. You have skating nightmares. Oh, to this day. <laughs> Um, but actually, funny enough, they are doing a revival um, in London, but without the. Roller skate. Really? Which I'm not quite sure how that it's works. It's without the roller skate. Oh, is that the one they've been working? Yeah, I did yeah. know they were working on that. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But it, w but huh. the original um, was pretty amazing. I mean, the, the stage had a bowl, like if you imagine a bowl going all the way around the back, and it was around. With behind front. the orchestra seats. Yes. Yeah, yes. I remember. And then I, I mean, this absolutely truth really. Um, I went around the bowl like sideways as you do. You're part of a train. And I was the end of the train, and they slightly miss 
you know, guided it, and I went off the edge of the stage. No, I don't but like I mean, they had um, like elastic netting, so I, I didn't hurt myself or anything. But you I just, mean, you, they, they but that happened. That's what yeah, happens. yeah. They well, I know when it was on Broadway, people were getting hurt all the time. But we, this really is not an interview about stomach. It <laughs> 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 well, could be, although I could talk about it a lot. Uh, you, ha you're like the Billy Joel. Of Green Room 42. I am. That's yes. nice. I've never heard that before. Yes. Billy Joel, <laughs> Billy Joel plays Madison Square Garden every month, and you play Green Room 42. I, yeah, just once a month. You know, I, I'm like, you know, have a nice life. I kind of go shopping in New York, eat lots of food, and then I'll go, oh, gosh, I've got a show to do once this month. Yeah, yeah. It's a great residency that? once, once a month. Do you love having, like, a, a regular thing like that? I do. I, I actually would like to do it more regularly. That's a funny word. Okay. Um, like but... But uh, at the moment, you know, once a month is what it is, and it's really nice. Yeah. I absolutely love it. And the green room, 42, are fabulous. They look after me. And the room's fantastic. Because, you know, some of the... Um, I don't like the word cabaret, mm -hmm. the C word. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, some of those sort of rooms, you, you have to sing from right to left, and you're constantly, like, turning right. your way. This is... Out yeah, you're right. You're, to you're the sort audience. of playing the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Yeah, it's so easy to play the room, and it's a quite a big room as well, so you can yeah. get lots of people in there. But it's intimate, and it's more affordable. Oh, for definitely. People, that like than some of the other rooms. Yeah. yeah, people really love it because it yeah. has a little bit more of a cool, casual vibe, and it really feels yeah. hip. And and you can see from every seat, but there there are some tickets that are very, very cheap. I'm not sure what the cheapest is. Something like fifteen dollars or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, they'll probably kill me if I got that wrong, but um, it, it is pretty cheap. And the reason, and there's no cover charge, right? So you can just sit there and drink water, and <laughs> right, yeah, you don't. There's no minimum, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's what I mean by that. Cool yes, minimum. Drink. Yeah, I but like it there. That's why I I put it out on um, in, um, no on Twitter that I was looking for a venue that didn't have that wasn't expensive because I want you know young people to be able to go out to yep. and enjoy themselves and not think about oh my gosh you know now I'm not going to be able to eat for a week, and so. Uh, and and somebody Ben Rimmler came back uh -huh. with the idea of green room uh -huh. and and I'm so glad he did. Look at that. Yeah. The the power of social media. Yeah. We found you a be a better more affordable venue. Yeah. I like that. I mean of course I'm poor but that's okay. <laughs> well okay so the name of the show yes. is Francis Rafael it, how do you say it out loud? I say There's two ways to say it. There's, yes. there's two titles. I don't know. Well. It's a written title more than a spoke out loud title. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always say Francis Rafael lives in New York because that's like what I wanted to get York. across. I live here, by the way. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, yes, live, live yeah. in New York, and then we stick a little S. Yeah. On it. it was actually, I think it was Craig's idea. Craig who? Craig Bierko. I know him. Yeah. I know Craig Bierko. Sat he's right talented. there. He's a talented guy. <laughs> does he write your titles? That what he does? He writes your show yeah, titles. Yeah, my many titles. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen. I feel like I've seen you guys on social media, maybe together. Yeah, he's around. Yes, we we do a lot of stuff together, really. That's nice. And we have a dog called Boo. I I just met that dog. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful dog. Um, the first dog to enter the Broadway.com studio. That's true. Now and forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now and forever. You know, I love New York, and New Yorkers love to applaud. Yeah. Lots of applause. Yeah, yeah, see? You just have to you do no <laughs> nothing and you get applause. It's nice. <laughs> now, you know how to work a room, especially um, a performance venue. I love watching you. And I'm going to go to the show Thank next you. week, uh, April 30th, 7 p.m. And then May 20th, 7 p.m. because yep. she has a residency. Yeah. Um, tell me about... You, you just seem to love it so much. And I feel like you're one of those performers that seeing you live in this kind of environment is kind of like the ultimate. What is it like for you? How do you get into the headspace? And what what do you love about these gigs? I, I mean, I love being within the audience. I love seeing their faces. I love... Yeah, you're everywhere. The, yeah, and I, I am. Um, to get into it, first of all, though, I do... Um, I'm very closed in. Uh, I'm very difficult to be around for a few days before a show. Cause I, I'm constantly thinking about words and what I want to do or mm -hmm. something new. I always introduce something new every time as well. Mm -hmm. and find little fun, other funny moments and you yeah. know, and challenge myself. Um, so And before the show, p particularly, I like a little bit of quiet space, a couple of hours, just on my own. Little, I've done the, uh, the sound check. Then it's Frankie time. And then I never get nervous. I don't mind if things mess up. If things mess up, the audience love it even more. Right. And we just use it. But um, of course, it never happens. 
very often, but you know. Um, but we have, a, yeah, I just have a, a great time in that intimate space. And, and what more can I say? Yeah. <laughs> so what are you performing? What have you? Do you add new music all the time, or is there anything sort sometimes of like new I to your add, repertoire recently? Yeah, or? sometimes I add a new music depending on a guest that's coming because my guests, um, when they come on, they they don't just come on and I introduce them and they sing a song. It doesn't happen like that. They become part of the story. The whole evening is a story, mm -hmm. it, and it and it starts in the past and it becomes present day by the end of it. I love that. And all. Um, everybody has like um, Craig is in it whenever he's in um, town um, and he Bierke. plays the role of Mr. Shirley Temple and that's all I'm saying Mr. Shirley Temple yes yes and then actually one of my um, guests before is in Harry Potter Stuart Ward oh. so uh -huh. um, yes um, he, he he's played um, my Parisian lover oh and I don't know why I'm doing all this stuff. You're quoting um, it. You're quoting it. Um, and uh, and I, ha I have lovely Wayne Wilcox, who's who did oh. it last time, and he's doing it again for me this time, which is fantastic. Next week? Yes. On Monday, Wayne Wilcox will be there? Yes. Will Mr. Shirley Temple be there? And Mr. Shirley Temple. Fantastic. And, and I also have Catherine Porter, who plays my best mate. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't do... Uh, I love how you just, just described the show. You don't do one of those shows where you say, and then I did Les Mis... And then sing on my own. That's no. not what you do. No. <laughs> and a lot of people do <laughs> shows like that. That is sort of the standard way yeah. to do a show. Yeah, it is standard. And, and I'm, because I'm just so odd, I, I just, it, it doesn't inspire me to do something yeah. like that. I have, so I, I write um, sort of vignettes that go in between the songs and they, they carry the story forward. Mm -hmm. And the songs carry the story forward, just like a, it's like a musical. Uh huh. Now you, uh, as we mentioned, next week Tony nominations are coming out. Do you remember the moment you found out you got a Tony nomination? Yes, I do remember. Um, I also remember um, the day before that it was in the New York Post that they predicted who was getting a nomination. Uh -huh. I was there. Did they predict you? They did. Okay. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, I, I, it didn't even occur to me I could be up for an award. I come from London and I'd never been up for an award before. And I was 21 years old. So it was a bit of a shock, but obviously, um, and I remember being in the theater when they told us, because um, there was before mobile phones and everything, So, yeah. um, and they told us, and it was really awkward as well, because I was up against someone else in the, in the company, and I found that very right. difficult. That's always tricky. Yeah, and someone who I really believe should have been up for something didn't mm. get nominated. So although I'm really thankful and grateful that I got one, um, and you know, the actual it, award, by the way. Yeah, and the yeah. award. And, and the Tony. <laughs> um, it, it, it does cause a little complication, you know. And, yeah. and it's not what we do it for. Right. Yeah. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, you know, it certainly yeah. wasn't. Right. It's never been in my head ever to, to do a performance to try and win an award. And actually, you know, um, the Tonys and... And all the awards that I got here in New York and in Washington, D.C., um, were in like a f few months of my life. And right. then I forgot all about awards ever mm. again. And I have been nominated for one U.K. award, um, that I, a U.K. award I didn't even know existed, but it's a fabulous award. It's actually called the U uh, U.K. Theatre Award. Mm. Um, but it's not something I, I think about. Yeah. You can't let it guide your life. No. It's not about awards. But I'm glad you have one. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> hey, Mr. Matt Roden. Hey, what? Are there any questions from the fans? Plenty. Oh, So nice. let's start off with David here. He says, being one of the original belters, oh, how, yeah. do you, how does it feel to have that style become so prominent on Broadway now? Oh. Wow, that's interesting. Well, that is really lovely. Um, yeah, I wish... Uh, no, just kidding. I was going to say, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm trying to invent a new style now myself, you know, to move on, <laughs> move it on. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep pushing it forward. <laughs> well, sometimes I do feel a bit, when I'm performing, I feel a bit like I'm impersonating myself. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> um, uh, Jeffrey wants to know, are you excited to see Samantha Barks in Pretty Woman? I've seen her dress rehearsal, uh, not dress rehearsal, um, I saw her do the last rehearsal in the studio right. in New York before they went to um, Chicago. Chicago yeah. It was fantastic and she was unbelievably fantastic. I mean, she was totally brilliant. 
So I am looking forward to seeing it absolutely on the stage. In, I on saw Broadway. her and she is fantastic. Is there a sisterhood of the Eponines? Is this a thing? Yeah, she's it's like, like she, a secret I, meeting. I feel that like happens, I, I'm like Mama Eponine and uh, she's one of my little babies. <laughs> 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 That's yeah. nice. I like that. Um, Alec wants to know any dream roles that you haven't played that you would love to do? Yes, um, I'd love to do Adelaide in Guys and Dolls. Ooh, that's fun. I mean, there's lots of roles I like to play, but that is one of the main ones. Oh, yeah, I want to hear. Oh. Whole, I want to hear the whole list. I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> the whole list. Oh God. Um, I'd like to do Rose in in um, Gypsy. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, oh, what else? Of course, I'm going to go blank now. Um, 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 Mrs. Lovett. No, no. Oh, I shouldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> It's not been my dream role. I yeah, love, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that um, Sweeney Todd, and especially the one that's um, on Barrow Street right, right, right now, right, which yeah. I've seen twice. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan, and also I think um, Stephen Sondheim's writing, particularly of that character, is like I so unbelievable. And I, I write lyrics, and I'm I I feel like giving up when I see his lyrics. They are fantastic. No, but I that that isn't a dream role for me because I, I do think it would be a, a challenge. But for me, I think that would be too much of a challenge. Mm. It, mm. it scares me. Yeah. Um, uh, Alec wants to know also, a favorite Les Mis memory? Oh, favorite one. Well, my favorite one um, was watching the, the rehearsal in the in the rehearsal rooms in the sort of basement of the Royal Shakespeare Company and just real, it, sort of, it loomed on me that, my gosh, I'm in something so special and so fantastic. And that was my first memory, seeing Patty um, seeing her die actually as Fontaine it's making me go cold Look right home. now yeah. oh, it was it's just such a beautiful um, feeling what had you done before Les Mis? how did you get I cast in well I the reason I got cast was I did Starlight Express right. and I played Dinah hey Dinah um, what's wrong <laughs> <laughs> and um, so Trevor Nunn directed that and he just when he came across Eponine and Les Miserables he was like oh Francis just has to play this role. But then he had to persuade the French composers and his co-director, John Caird, that I was right. So he asked me to come along and sing an Edith Piaf song, um, which I did for them uh, on a Friday night at six o'clock. And um, by the Monday morning at 10, I got a call saying the role was mine. And I was the first one cast, so I was very lucky. You know what's crazy? You you the Starlight Express cast was very young. So I remember on Broadway too. Yeah. I remember like Jane Krakowski was like eighteen or nineteen yeah. when she did it. Yeah. And nowadays, like even high school musicals, no one people aren't even in their twenties. Really? No. Wonder I feel like why. people are being it's cast right. older you're, you're now. You're totally right. You're there aren't totally that many right. shows with like eighteen year olds. Yeah. In them. I was eighteen when I did Starlight as well, and I met Jane when she did it as well, and we became really good mates. And mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Yeah, because even the Harry Potter kids are not, you know, they're right. they're old. They're yeah, older. I feel like people are, yeah, I don't know. Bring back the youth. Um, yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, Sarah says, you're such an amazing human being. Thank you so much for conceiving the role of Eponine. She's a role that so many girls want to play, including myself. Do you have any tips to the Eponine wannabes? Oh, oh gosh. I, I mean, for me, I just think it's all about when you, when you're saying the words, singing the words, you just got to be thinking about about it for the first time ever. Every time you sing those lines, just also have a, like another thought process going on in the back of your head about you know about your dreams. And um, I, I always do that when I when I sing anything. I always have a backstory that goes on, so I'm thinking two things at once, and mm. it keeps it really fresh and raw. I think Eponine should be really raw, and I. I mean, obviously, I'm not casting it, but this is how I see Eponine. She she's from the street, and and, and in England, um, I know it's set in France, but in England, she would have been um, singing in old pub songs. She'd have had that kind of voice, like the real sort of rasping sing-along type, um, old-fashioned. We used to call it music hall, not music hall. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, for some reason, I. I that's how I feel she should be. She should wear shoes that are too big for her and walk like she's got these boots that she just found in the gutter and she's lucky to be wearing shoes. It's all about the movement as well and, and, and just bringing something different to the role. I think um, 
I hope that helps in a way. I feel I, like you I, just gave like 10 great. <laughs> yeah, like literally <laughs> a master class. Like those actually were all amazing things you just said. <laughs> and I can't wait to see all the community theater uh, eponyms that get to take <laughs> advantage of all take that. Take all that. Yeah. <laughs> I was really upset when I got to Broadway because they didn't bring my boots. And I was oh. and they gave me nice little neat, you know, size. I don't know what you call it here. It's like size six, I think they mm -hmm. were. And I was like, but she wouldn't have her real size. Right. Could you get me some big boots, please? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You want it for that. real. Last but yeah. not least, Sanford wants to know who would win in a fight, Dinah <laughs> or Eponine? <laughs> <laughs> We've Eponine. been dying to know the answer to this. Eponine for absolute sure. <laughs> for sure. She'd do, she'd, she would fight, yeah. <laughs> well, Dinah was just... Dinah was wimpy. I mean, she was too a lovelorn, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they both, were both were in different ways. <laughs> Look yeah. at you with the lovelorn roles. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to go see you next Monday Thank you. at Green Room 42. And I'll be thinking during every song, you're going to have multiple things going on. You're going to be oh, yeah, you'll see it. thinking things Think and experiencing. And you just came particular. out of a dark room for a few hours. <laughs> I love thinking of all of that. There's one particular, um, all right with me. Just remember that when you, when I sing that for sure. It's all that. that There's song? like okay. three things going on in my three. head at that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> okay. So April 30th at seven and May 20th at seven. And you can go on the Green Room 42's website, mm -hmm. Google it. And on my and my website, I always have the oh, ticket links as and well. And social media. I mean, yeah. you're all over the place. Yeah. And I'm so happy that you lives in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so thrilled you're here. I'm thrilled. Too. Uh, hey, you. Matt, why yeah. don't you I take us out? keep this microphone. No, it's <laughs> perfect. Uh, thank you, guys, everybody. You guys know the deal. We do this live every single weekday at 5 p.m. here on Broadway.com's Facebook page, on YouTube. It goes out on our site, on the TV, the whole thing. And... We release this as a podcast. So if you haven't yet, subscribe to the Live at Five podcast. We'll be back tomorrow. Ben Thompson from Waitress is going to be here, and we will see you then. Happy Monday, everybody. Bye.